Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And please, next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install our upgraded power folding mirrors on this 2006 Dodge Ram. This truck does not have power folding mirrors. We're going to put the, uh, put the power fold mirrors on it and show you how to wire them. Uh, on this vehicle, it also has optional running lights as well as puddle lamps. Um, so we wire up all those things. Uh, you will be able to purchase the mirrors as you want. Maybe you just want the power fold. Uh, maybe you want the puddle lights. Maybe you don't. Um, but this will show you how to do each one of those. And you'll need new mirrors from 1AAuto.com and a bunch of other uh, pretty common tools. You will need wiring pliers um, and you'll need something to uh, make the dead panel on your dash into a good place to mount the switch, as you'll see later. Okay, we're going to show you in detail everything to do on the passenger side. The driver's side is the same procedure, uh, but you want to remove the screw that's in behind the door handle, as well as a couple other screws, one up top and two down at the bottom. With those screws removed, you can lift up on the panel, and then really more for when you install the panel, just pop the lock um, bezel out, and then reach up and through, and I like to do it this way, just to make sure you don't break that panel. You can kind of push the clips and pop that panel up, and then there's tabs on those harnesses. Push the tabs in, remove the harnesses, pull your panel up and off. Four Phillips screws hold in the speaker. Remove those screws. And once you have the screws out, just pull the uh, speaker out. And then on the back there is a harness connection. There's just a little tab you press and pull that connection out. The harness has a little tab on the top. Push it down and disconnect the harness. And then remove the three 10 millimeter nuts that hold the mirror in place. It's actually clips that hold the mirror even after the nuts are off. They're on each side of the harness connection. And you see here we push them in as a helper holds the mirror and takes it off. Okay, use a screwdriver to help yourself get under the door sill plate. And then pull up and snap out and then pull up to release the other clips that hold in. You'll want to pull your glove box down so you can access in behind it. There's just tabs on each side. You just push in on the sides of the glove box and then pull it down and then it will unhook from the hinge. Now you need to disconnect the body harness and there's basically four tabs around the harness. So you, I'm actually pushing in on the tabs with this, the screwdriver and prying out at the same time. Um, and then I reach in, I'm kind of going behind it to push on the final tab and pull that out. And then disconnect the harness by pushing down on the little tab and pulling it apart. Okay, we're going to run our wires through the body harness connection. So I'm going to reach in the door and just push the rubber boot through the door. Now slowly and carefully pull your water shield down. Be very careful not to tear it or rip it. And you just need to pull the top corner down on each side. 
the driver's side, you want to pull the side dash panel off, work your fingers in under the bottom, and then slide them up and release the clips all the way around. You need to access the dome light harness, so you want to remove this screw that holds the pillar trim in. Two screws on the bottom hold the lower dash panel in there and in behind that brake controller. And once you have the screws out, pull out on that dash panel. You don't want to pull it down. You want to pull it kind of mostly back and a little bit down to release all the clips. And now we're going to um, run one of our power fold harnesses across. And now we'll pull that harness through the rest of the way and then feed it up into the dash and through uh, the hole in the body of the truck. And you want to repeat this process with the harness uh, for the light as well. Okay, the folding harness has uh, insulation on it and you basically, you have to put it through the uh, body harness boot. So you want to go back about 18 inches and cut it and then cut about a foot of the insulation off um, back from there to the body of the car. And I'm just going to fast forward as I do that. We're actually not removing the insulation that's near the plug. We're removing kind of an intermediate piece of the insulation. And now on the body plug end, you want to pull the rubber boot off and then use a small flat blade screwdriver and there's a tab right inside to release that and pull uh, the harnesses out. And now you can feed both your light harness and your power uh, fold harness through. And you can see I get the uh, power fold harness through and I pull that black insulation through to the point where I have just the bare wires. And then you, you get those wires, make sure they're kind of placed in the corners of your uh, harness connection. And once you get them placed right, you can slide your harness back in and it's nice and tight and the wires are through. Okay, here I'm using a basically a straightened out coat hanger or you can use a piece of stiff wire and I'm feeding it through the boot and out the other end so I can hook it onto the wires and then pull the wires through uh, the door hinge or the door jam. Now with the wires through, I tape um, my wires onto it and then carefully pull it through that boot. Now feed your wires into the door and very careful at this point, uh, you need to make sure they come in into the door and then they exit out through this hole here and make sure that they do not in any way interfere with the window regulator. Um, you need to make sure that they're uh, in behind the regulator and come up without interfering with the window. Both harnesses are routed up through the door and make sure the harnesses come through the mirror pad. 
And now we're going to hook those harnesses in as we put the uh, mirror up to the door. Um, on These are prototype mirrors that I'm fitting, so the harnesses were a little bit short, so they caused a little bit of difficulty. Um, that won't be a problem on the production mirrors. Okay, with all the harnesses rounded through correctly, put the three 10 millimeter nuts back on, and we'll tighten them up. Okay, you want to take the all black wire and hook it to a ground. So remove um, the end of it and put a uh, wiring eye on it. Loosen up that 10 millimeter bolt that's just below the mirror and put the wire, ground wire in there and tighten it back up. Okay, so now your door is all wired. So you're going to want to reach in and get the boot back in place. Pull it through the door, through that speaker hole and get it back into the door and then reconnect your harness and you'll kind of have to pull the wires through on the other side just to make sure they don't kink at all and you just work it in place you have to kind of if you move the door around a little bit it makes it a little easier but lock it in place make sure the boot is all uh, back where it should be and snapped in and then just do some put some wire ties hold everything in place so it doesn't move around and make sure you cut those off and put the insulation back in place. Now here we're just wire tying, wire tying the harnesses together using some uh, actually electrical tape. Uh, tie them together and then wire tie them up into place um, so that they don't hang down at the passenger's feet. Okay, we have to hook the uh, harness for the power fold to a switched power source. And on this truck, once we opened up that side panel, uh, there's a uh, empty harness connection here and the orange wire is a switched power source and just to make sure you might want to just probe it with an electrical connector or an electrical probe and just to make sure that it's only on when the power of the truck is on and then on our vehicle we had optional puddle lights on uh, the prototypes so we hook those puddle lights into the blue and blue with green stripe wire um, that ran the dome lights. Okay, so here's just a close-up of um, using those fuse or the wire taps to hook in, and then we reconnected our dome harness after uh, we had hooked the uh, power source for those puddle lights up. And just a test here, we're turning the inside lights on and off and you can see the puddle lights are lighting up and now just put that uh, pillar trim back in place and tighten up the screw that holds it you'll need to ground the fold switch so this wire is the one coming from the uh, power folding switch harness and we're just hooking it to a screw at the bottom of the dash right there we've run our wires for both doors and the wire for the switch now we're going to mount our switch into this small uh, dead panel. And you can see I'm using a Dremel tool to cut out an exact hole for the switch. And now just a test. We've uh, again, I, like I said, we've run all the harnesses for both doors and the switch harness into the dash, and just a test. And the mirrors fold and move back. Now you have to run a wire out to the engine compartment of the vehicle as a power source for the marker lights. So we're going to run it right through um, the boot or the wiring boot right there. Seems to be the best way to do it. And we're going to disconnect this harness. Just makes it easier to get to things. So just pull that back and disconnect that harness. So we use the same method that we used with the boots between the door. You put a piece of stiff wire up through that harness boot, hook it on to uh, the wire and pull the wire through into the engine compartment.
You can see here the wire hooked to our coat hanger, or actually taped to it, and we're pulling it back through into the vehicle. Now we're going to hook that wire to the parking light fuse, and we're kind of using an old style um, fuse tap. Uh, our kit will come with newer style uh, fuse taps that create a separate circuit for uh, the mirror lights, but the parking light fuse on this vehicle is right here. Pull it out and put the tap in with it and reconnect it. And there's our wire hooked in and put the um, fuse box cover back down. And if you just kind of push the wire around the corner, it'll go down. And then here we are just uh, reconnecting a harness that we disconnected just to make some room to get the wiring through. Okay, again here I'm using a wire tap and I'm hooking one of the lights or the, actually the driver's side marker light to that power wire we just ran from the fuse box. And you can see I turn it on, a little test, and the marker light works. And so now I'm using another wire tap and connecting uh, the wire for the other side. And the lights are LED, so there's very little draw. With all the wiring complete, or mostly complete, we've wire tied everything into place make sure it's nice and secure and it's not going to drop down in anybody's feet or get tangled in anything. Put our lower panel back in place and secure it with the two bottom screws. Here we have our switch in that little dead panel and hook the switch in and press it into the dash. And put the side panel back in place and any of the carpet trim on the sides. Hook your, hook your glove box back into place and then it just raises up and goes back into place. And again we've secured all the wiring with wire ties. And put the carpet and side trim back in place. Reconnect the main mirror harness and reinstall the uh, radio speaker. And we're going to kind of fast forward as we go through uh, putting the door panel back on and again we showed you in detail the passenger side uh, but also you obviously need to repeat everything we did on the passenger side on the driver side With everything back together, a quick test. Power fold works nicely. And then the lights come on with the truck lights. And again, our prototypes also had pedal lights. You may or may not have pedal lights on the, on the mirrors that you purchase. We hope this video helps you out. Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Please feel free to call us toll-free, 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet.